Hi everybody, welcome to our championship edition of our Pac-12 football preview along with the UCLA Hall of Famer J.J. Stokes. Roxy Bernstein with you, glad you're with us for another edition. Before we preview the championship game, the inaugural Pac-12 championship game, let's take a look back at last week, a lot of rivalry games. J.J. that we saw, USC, UCLA, Matt Barkley goes on to be Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Week with a dynamic performance against UCLA. Boy, the USC offense was just phenomenal against the Bruins. Yeah, they got a, I mean, when you see the game, I actually got a chance to see the game in person and see Matt Barkley perform. He was outstanding. I mean, his understanding of the defense and getting the ball into his playmaker's hands, he has two of those guys, Marquise Lee and Robert Woods. Did a fabulous job of getting the ball, distributing it to them, and let them do the work. Fantastic. I, I mean, I haven't seen a quarterback that good in a long time. The defensive player of the week for the Pac-12 Conference this past weekend was John Major, the linebacker from Colorado. A big road victory for the Buffs. They go into Salt Lake City, ruin the Utes' chances of winning the Pac-12 South. And the uh, first installment, at least Pac-12 edition, of the Rumble in the Rockies goes to Colorado. And John Major in the Colorado defense, a big reason why holding Norm Chow's vaunted Utah offense to 14 points. Yeah, seriously, they came in with that defense and they played stout. They came in and created a couple fumbles for that Utah offense and, and they really never looked back. And the Pac-12 Special Teams Player of the Week from California, kicker Giorgio Tavecchio, a huge game for California, hit a late field goal to put that game away. And that shootout in the desert goes to the Bears, 47-38. I mean, anytime you can be that influential in the kicking game for uh, field goals, I mean, you are deserving of Player of the Week. Well, we talked about Matt Barkley, and Barkley being the Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Week again. Andrew Luck had another strong performance for Stanford as they beat Notre Dame at Stanford Stadium in what is Luck's final home game, and he throws for four touchdown passes in the game against the Fighting Irish. Luck, Barkley, let's talk some Heisman Trophy here, JJ. Will both guys end up in New York? Are they going to be finalists for this award? I think both guys deserve to be finalists for the awards. You look at them, and, and they have all the similarities outside of size. I look at Luck, who's a little bigger, but then you look at how they understand the defense, you look how they distribute the football, you look at how they orchestrate everything and are in complete control the entire game. And I mean, it's magnificent to watch these guys perform. If you had a vote, who would you vote for for the Heisman Trophy? See, I was fortunate enough to see Matt Barkley play last, and I saw what he did for UCLA throwing for 423 yards and six touchdowns. So. If you're asking me right now, I say Barkley because I just witnessed perfection. I'm going to play the other side of the coin here. Is there a more valuable player in the country to his team than Andrew Luck to Stanford? Uh, no, I would say that after just having said what I did, uh, you look at what he has around him and how he uses his tight ends. He doesn't have that speed burner on the outside, that guy that can stretch the field, yet he's still able to control this offense and distribute the ball and eventually lead his team to victory. All right, let's break it down. The inaugural Pac-12 championship game coming your way Friday night, 5 o'clock kick on Fox from Eugene, Oregon, Autzen Stadium, the Oregon Ducks, the Northern Division champion hosting the Southern Division champion, UCLA Bruins. How do you see this? Well, this is going to be a huge game, first of all, because it's the first. Uh, you look at Oregon and all their weapons, and I'm not even going to talk about the weapons. You know, I'm going to talk about the young freshman, DeAnthony Thomas. I mean, that was amazing. 179 all-purpose yards last week. And what really stands out also is that Darren Thomas throwing for four touchdowns. I mean, when we think of Oregon, we think of the running game and, and kind of expediting things, but Darren Thomas has really come along and he's spreading the ball out to many people. UCLA, it'll be an emotional time for them. They're yes. coming off a uh, drubbing at the hands of their crosstown rival, USC. News coming out this week that Rick Neuheisel will not be the coach after the season. For UCLA, how does that change their emotions going into this game and their psyche and when they have a chance to play for a BCS bid? And if they beat Oregon, UCLA will end up in the Rose Bowl. Well, this is personal here because I do know UCLA. I attend UCLA and I call games for UCLA. So I understand how close the players are to Rick Neuheisel. And I think he recruited will, you. He did. He brought me into UCLA. It will be emotional for these guys because they do love Rick Neuheisel. And, and for this team, what they have to do is look back at the previous games that Oregon has played, even a week ago against Oregon State. I mean, they allowed Sean Mannion to throw for 300 yards. Can UCLA duplicate that? Can they have a running game? Last week, Oregon State only ran for 16 yards. UCLA averages about 190. So 
there are things that UCLA can do to be successful. UCLA, Oregon, they didn't play in the regular season this year. They're going up to Austin Stadium, which is always a really tough place to win for anybody, although USC just did it a few weeks ago, went up there to Eugene and beat the Ducks. Is there something that UCLA can take from that, knowing that Oregon, hey, recently they've lost a home game after that long home field winning streak? Well, they can just look at the manner in which USC went up there and did that, and I think they can take that. Emotionally, they're going to be on a high. Like I said, they're going to be fighting for their coach. But look, you have to really block out all the crowd noise, everything that's going around you, because let's face it, cameras, pictures, everything's going to be going on. In addition to that, you know this is your coach's last game, so emotions will be running high. Can you maintain an even kill and play the game and focus on what you need to get done assignment-wise? On the other side with Oregon, JJ, any chance at all that they look at this going, oh, it's 6-6 six and six UCLA, we've got this in the bag, they, they, they take UCLA lightly? No, there's no chance that that happens. Chip Kelly isn't that guy, and I don't think he'll allow his team to be that team. These guys are already looking forward to playing in the game. You hear some of the quotes, we can't wait to this championship game. They're excited, they're hyped up, and it's at home. They know they're going to have their home crowd there. It's going to be a sight. All right, UCLA, you talked about a little bit. Kevin Prince, that offense, what are the keys for them to try to hang in this game and try to pull the upset? For Kevin Prince, he's going to make good decisions will allow, especially in the run game. He has to know whether to hand the ball off to his tailback or keep it if the defensive end seals down on that edge. And in the passing game, I think he can be influential. He needs to be more accurate. He needs to get the ball out and let his play players make plays. Defensively for UCLA, they're banged up going yes. into this game. But what can they do to try to slow down this vaunted Oregon offense? Well, for UCLA's defense, I think it starts up front. You have to look at Cassius Marsh. You have to look at Nate Chandler and Dayton Jones. Those guys need to stay on the field. They need to make sure that they can handle the play-by-play -play at, without any breaks in between. I think if they can handle that, we've seen with LSU's defensive tackles that you can make an effort to stop that or slow down the running game. On the other side, if you're Oregon going into this game, you look at UCLA, what should the Ducks be concerned about, about taking on the Bruins? Well, they should be concerned about the running game. Can they really use the clock wisely and really run the ball well? Because that eliminates the time that the Ducks can spend on the field. And I think that will keep the game at an even kill and even a close game. Well, there you have it, the inaugural Pac-12 championship game coming up 5 o'clock Friday night, Eugene, Oregon, Austin Stadium, as the North Division champion Oregon Ducks host the South Division champion UCLA Bruins. So for my partner, J.J. Stokes, Roxy Bernstein, thank you for joining us for our championship edition of Pac-12 Football Preview.